ओके टुडे डिस्कस्ड रिगार्डिंग चैप्टर थ्री ओवरहेड लाइट कंडक्टर्स ऑफ जीटीडी ब्रांच इलेक्ट्रिकल नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज ओवरहेड लाइन कंडक्टर्स द मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज्ड कंडक्टर्स मटेरियल्स फॉर ओवरहेड लाइंस आर कॉपर एल्युमिनियम स्टील कोड एल्युमिनियम गाल्वानाइज्ड स्टील एंड कैडमियम कॉपर द चॉइस ऑफ ए पर्टिकुलर मटेरियल विल डिपेंड अपॉन द कॉस्ट द रिक्वायर्ड इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज एंड लोकल कंडीशंस All conductors used for overhead lines are preferably stranded in order to increase the flexibility. In stranded conductors, there is generally one central central wire, and around this, successive layers of the wire containing six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four wires. Thus, if there are n layers. The total number of individual wire is n, 3n, all into n plus 1 plus 1. In this manufacturer of stranded conductors, the consecutive layers of the wire are twisted for spiral in opposite directions, so that layers are bound together. The cos phi is the receiving end power factor. V s is equal to sending end voltage per phase. The phasor diagram for this circuit is shown in figure. Taking the receiving end voltage V r is reference voltage. The receiving end voltage V r is equal to V r plus J zero. The load current I r is equal to I r cos phi r minus J sin phi r. This one is the vector diagram. This is the voltage V r. I r is the current phase. This one is the V one the input supply voltage. In phase drop is I R into R by two, I R XL by two. This one is B S. This is I S Z by two, I S R by two, I S XL by two. The voltage across the V one is equal to V R plus I R Z by two is equal to V R plus I R equal to cos phi R minus J sin phi R R by two plus J XL by two. Capacitive current I C is equal to J omega C V one minus two J 2 pi F C into V1. Sending end current I S is equal to I R plus I C. Sending end voltage V S is equal to V1 plus I S Z by 2 is equal to V1 plus I S plus R by 2 plus J X L by 2. Nominal power methods. In this method, capacitance of the conductor, that is line to neutral, is divided into two halves. One half being lumped at the sending end, and other half at the receiving end, as shown in figure. It is obvious that capacitance at the sending end has no effect on the line drop. However, its charging current must be added to line current in order to obtain the total sending end current. This is the circuit diagram of the terminal pi methods. Your R and X L are connected in series. Two capacitors having values C by two, C by two are shunted together. V S is the input voltage I S, and the load is the output voltage. And the cores, the capacitance values divided into two halves, C by two, C by two. The current across first C by C by two is I C two. Current across another C by two is I C two. And the load is connected across the output. V R is the receiving end voltage. V S is the sending end voltage. Let I R is equal to load current per phase, R resistance per phase, XL inductive reactance per phase, and C the capacitive reactance per phase. Cos phi is equal to receiving end power factor. V S is equal to sending end voltage per phase. The phasor diagram for the circuit is shown in figure. Taking the receiving end voltage at the reference phasor, we have the types of the conductors. First one is copper. The copper is the ideal material for overhead lines, owing to its high electrical conductivity and greater tensile strength. Copper has high current density. That is the current carrying capacity of the copper per unit of x cross sectional area is quite large. The two leads are these leads two advantages. Firstly, smaller cross section area of the conductor is required, and secondly, the area offered by the conductor to wind wind loads is reduced. However, due to this higher cost and non availability, it is rarely used for these purposes. Nowadays, the trend is to use Aluminium in place of copper. Aluminium. Aluminium is cheap 
and light as compared to the copper, but it has much smaller conductivity and tensile strength. The relative comparison of the two material is briefly below. The conductivity of aluminum is 60% that of copper. The smaller conductivity of the aluminum means that, that for any particular transmission of efficiency, the cross-sectional area of conductor must be larger in aluminum than copper. For the same resistance, the diameter of the aluminum conductor is about 1 to 26 times the diameter of the copper conductor. The increased cross-section of the aluminum exposes a greater surface to wind pressure and therefore supporting towers must be designed for greater transverse strength. This often requires the use of higher towers with the consequent of greater sag. The specific gravity of aluminum 2.71 gram per cc is lower than that of copper 8.9 gram per cc. Therefore, an aluminum conductor has almost one half of the weight of equivalent copper conductor. For this reason, the supporting structure, stop, supporting structure of for aluminum need not to be made so strong as that of copper conductors. The aluminum conductor being light is liable to greater swing and hence larger cross arms are required. The third one is steel code aluminum. Due to low tensile strength, aluminum conductors produce greater sag. This prohibits their use for larger spans and makes them unsuitable for long distance transmission. In order to increase the tensile strength, the aluminum conductor is reinforced with a core of galvanized steel wire. The composite conductor thus obtained is known as steel code aluminum and is abbreviated as ACSR conductor steel reinforced. This one is the aluminum conductor structure, this one is the aluminum and this is the steel. Steel core inside it and out of the periphery aluminum conductor is there. Steel code aluminum conductor consists of central core of galvanized steel wires surrounded by a number of aluminum strands. Usually diameter of both steel and aluminum wires is same. This next galvanized steel. The steel has very high tensile strength, therefore galvanized steel conductor can be used for extremely long span or for short line sections, exposed to abnormally high stress due to climatic conditions. They are they have been found very suitable in rural areas where cheapness is the main consideration. Due to poor conductivity and high resistance of steel, such conductors are not suitable for transmitting large power over a long distance. However, they can be used to advantage for transmitting a small power over a small distance where the size of the copper conductor desirable from the economic consideration would be too small and thus unsuitable for use because of poor mechanical strength. Third one is cadmium copper. The conductor material now being employed in certain cases is proper aluminum with cadmium. An addition of 1% or 2% cadmium to copper increases the tensile strength by about 50% and the conductivity is only reduced by 15% below that of pure copper. Therefore, cadmium copper conductor can be useful for exceptionally long spans. However, due to high cost of cadmium, such conductors will be economically only for lines of small cross sections. That is, however, the cost of the conductor the material is comparatively small compared with the cost of the supports.